Hi, Christian Grubenhoff from Liverpool. Uh, my second video of the day. And uh, I've been playing with um, some uh, interesting problems of slope stability. And I just wanted to show you how to set up a slope. And um, what I was investigating was um, the influence of say 3D geometry and slopes. Usually slope stability is considered as a 2D problem. What happens if we go into uh, 3D? So usually the 2D plane strain approximations is viewed as being on the safe side. And I think that's what this analysis here that I'm about to show will um, show as well. Uh, but let's get started and I am going to switch now to the ZY plane or the YZ plane uh, to define my slope. And I'm going to do that uh, using the prism. I'm going to have a slope which is 10 meters high. Uh, this, the grid lines here are, are 5 meters. And so this slope is going to be a two, uh, one on, on two uh, slope. So I have the cross section here and then a height. So that's basically the uh, extrusion, the, the um, magnitude of the extrusion out of the uh, YZ plane into the X plane. And I'll choose 10 meters here. And then I can rotate it as well uh, again. And uh, I have something like this okay and uh, i'm going to place a foundation on this slope on top of the slope and then i'm going to load that foundation and and see what happens and i am going to place and i'm going to first um, solve basically a plane strain problem as a 3d problem so i'm going to place a strip footing from one edge from one end of the uh, domain to the other and I'm going to make that footing two meters from the edge, the crest of the slope. So that's at with a y coordinate, um, not the y is down here, with a y coordinate of minus 17. And I'm going to make the width of the foundation also two. So that brings it to uh, at the other side of the bay, uh, the other corner of the base, to minus 19, and then I'm going to have a height of just say one meter. And I'm go just going to use a standard MC basic material, uh, cohesion of 5 kPa, a friction angle of 25, and a unit weight of 18. Again, as with all other uh, demonstrations, you can of course change those parameters as you like a rigid material for the foundation, rigid weight weightless material. Then standard fixities, and this is exactly what I want in this problem, and I want one more fixity. I want to make sure that this footing moves straight down. So the footing is somehow restrained to move um, straight down, so it doesn't move in the y direction here. And I can use, I can select this face, and then use a normal support to make sure it, it doesn't move anywhere but downwards. And then the load on top, a multiplier distributed load. And then let's try to solve the next element as usual and three adaptivity steps as usual as well. Let's just solve this in and let's just see if it looks reasonable. It looks, I think, pretty reasonable. This is sort of what we would expect as an influence um, of the slope here. So it's more or less in this direction, it's more or less a sort of a regular bearing capacity failure. And then, of course, um, in the other direction, well, there is a weakening because of this, of this slope. 
this is actually 243 uh, we end up with. So a stress, an ultimate stress here on top of the foundation of 243 kPa. Now this is actually a fairly difficult problem. Um, you can try to solve it in, in 2D as well using Optum G2 and you'll see that you'll actually need quite a few elements to to sort of get to the um, exact solution or to get upper and lower bounds with, with, a, with a small error. Uh, and you can see there's not a lot of elements in the mesh here. Uh, and um, you might want to just sort of do some convergence studies or alternatively use the upper and lower bound elements uh, as well. This result is not too bad, but um, it is not a completely uh, trivial problem and it is actually a rather coarse mesh we have used here. So just a few disclaimers, but what I wanted to study was, was the effect of the length of this foundation. And now suppose that we don't have a strip footing, but we have actually a um, we have actually a uh, we have a um, we have a square foundation on top of the slope here. What is the ultimate stress uh, of a square foundation on top of a slope rather than a strip footing? And to investigate that, we can. Um, modify the geometry. So this is two meters wide and if I say that this plane here is a plane of symmetry well then the footing should be 1.5 meters uh, into the plane here in the in the x direction basically. So I need to cut it off to 1.5 meters so uh, over here and then into the plane what are we at here um, so that should be 8.5 the other corner and then a height of minus one so we move downwards and then we can delete all of this so this is now a symmetry plane the other side over here we sort of assume for the time being that it's far enough away uh, for it not to have any effect um, so the failure will be here in this area hopefully otherwise we will have to uh, extend the domain uh, in that direction, in the in the x direction. But let's try to see what we get. And if the conventional wisdom is is correct, then we should have a higher bearing capacity here than in the case of a strip footing. And that's that's how it sort of looks for the time being, at least. So we had 243 for the strip and we have 309 for the square foundation. And how does the failure mechanism look? It looks something like that. Yeah, as you can see, there's sort of a tendency to a to less of an influence of the slope maybe. It's more of a regular bearing capacity failure, probably. So, um, and an increase from 243 to 309. So, uh, well, it's not a whole lot. It's about 20%, but it's, it's, it's what it is. So, the rule of thumb that the plane strain Stability is on the safe side, is uh, at least uh, as far as this example goes, correct. So um, there you have it. Till next time.